highest ocean, high in the highest mountain, deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق فسوى. وقدر فهدى وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى الحمد لله الذي أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأغنى وأقنى الحمد لله الذي شق البحار وأجر الأنهار الحمد لله الذي يكور النهار على الليل ويكور الليل على النهار الحمد لله الذي أنقذ من جهالة وهدى من ضلالة وأنار القلوب والأبصار وأحيى الضمائر والأفكار All praise belong to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the glorified and exalted the one who created everything and made it perfect All praise belong to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the glorified and exalted the one who determined a measure for everything and guided it. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified and exalted, the one who makes whom he wills laugh and makes whom he wills weep and cry. The one who proportionate wealth made some of us rich and wealthy for a wisdom, for a test, and made some of us poor and needy, again for a wisdom and as a test. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified and exalted, the one who causes death and the one who gives life, the one who split the sea, the one who made the rivers run and flow, the one who makes the night fold over the day and makes the day fold over the night, the one who saved us from ignorance, the one who guided us from misguidance, the one who enlightened our chests and our hearts and the one who revived our thoughts and our consciousness. Some one like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a God like this, that is what I meant. The only one who deserves to be worshipped and obeyed. And that is why we call upon him. Allahumma ya man ala al arsh istawa. O Allah. You're the one who rose above the throne in a manner that suits your majesty. O Allah, you're the one who knows what we reveal and what we conceal. Nothing is hidden about us from you. You see our places and you see us where we are. And you hear everything that we say. We call upon you. We ask you for sincerity. We know nothing will benefit us. Nothing will help us. Except the thing which we had sincerity. Whether it is a saying. Whether it is an action. O oh Allah, we call upon you by the virtue of your beautiful names and lofty attributes to forgive our shortcomings and sins. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid. This is episode number three from 
the series Aqida Matters. In the last two episodes, we still trying to introduce to the sub introduce all of you to the subject of Aqida in a way that hopefully can attract each one of you. Teaching Aqida is something that can be a little bit complicated. And this is where the challenge is. But in the previous two episodes, we spoke about the importance of learning about Aqidah. And also, we addressed the issue of why the Prophet ﷺ started with Aqidah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the scholars say the religion is made of aqidah and from the aqidah branches the sharia the rituals the commands and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept anything that you do unless your belief system is sound that is why Aqidah matters. I promised last episode that I will become a little bit academic, but with some graphics, with some PowerPoint. We call this episode, What Does Aqidah Mean? Or What Does Aqidah Mean? Part 2. Basically, we're going to reintroduce what we introduced the previous episode but with some graphics and hopefully this will help you understand because I'm telling you if you do not grasp I know a lot of you and I have received a lot of emails and a lot of um, suggestions and recommendations and uh, I appreciate that I know a lot of you are looking forward to go into the depth of the subject learning Tawheed, learning about the angels, learning about the books and messengers, learning about the day of resurrection, learning about the Qadr. I understand this is the essence of the series, Aqidah Matters. But yet we have to understand what is the definition of the word Aqidah. And this is the purpose of this show tonight. Linguistically, they say Aqidah is deriving from the word nut, Uqdah in Arabic. When you tie a rope and pull it, you normally create a nut. This nut is called in Arabic Uqdah. In Arabic is called Uqdah. So this is where the word Aqidah derives from. Which means the following, that which is done is called Aqidah, that which is settled is called Aqidah, that which is firmly fixed is called Aqidah. Something that you do not even question. I tell you there is a punishment in the grief, done deal, it's done. I tell you there is a blessing in the grief, done deal, done. I tell you that, listen, you're going to be resurrected after you, uh, you, you uh, buried. Done deal. I tell you in the day of resurrection, you're going to see Allah, if Allah wills. Done deal. You're going to talk to Allah. Done deal. I tell you that there is Jannah. Done deal. There is hell. Done deal. You don't question it. That is what Aqeed. So anything that you do not question is called Aqeed. So this is the linguistic definition of the word. Now the scholars, they normally come up also with something called the technical definition of Aqidah. What do we mean by the technical definition of Aqidah? Let's look at the uh, uh, graphic here. Aqidah, according to the scholars of Islam, is the firm creed that one's heart is fixed upon. Without any wavering or doubt, it excludes any 
doubt or suspicion. So anything that you doubt or suspect cannot be called aqidah. Aqidah refers to those matters which are believed in with certainty and conviction in one's heart and soul. They are not tainted with any doubt or uncertainty. Now there are three key words in that definition. Pay attention to this. The first word is matters. The second word is cert certainty, meaning yaqeen. The third word means uh, uh, is conviction or commitment. Pay attention to this, because the rest of what we will learn is about these three words. What do we mean by matters? What do we mean by certainty? What do we mean by conviction? Let's go over the first one, matters. The three key words, let's go over them. Matters of faith are six articles of faith. The six articles of faith. The six pillars of Iman. You believe Allah exists. You believe He is the creator, the sustainer, the provider. You believe that He has the most beautiful names and the most lo lofty attributes. And as a result of this, you, con you convict yourself to you adhere or you submit to Him. So the six articles of faith, the first of them is the belief in Allah. You also believe that Allah has angels, and with the angels come the jinn. And we're going to talk about that. I know you're looking forward to this. Books. The angels brought down books. Delivered it to the messengers, and Allah commanded them, the messengers, to convey it to the people. And one of the core of the messages is the day of resurrection. That's why it's number five. The hereafter. How it will happen and what will happen and all of this. And the fact that Allah did everything for a wisdom. That's why the Qadr. The Qadr is a testimony for Allah's wisdom. For the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm telling you, one of the most beautiful things that can boost your faith. When you look at something and you see the wisdom of Allah in it. That is why Al-Qadr, the destiny was placed the last thing. Because everything was ordained. All of this was ordained. So the first word is explained. The six articles of faith. And this is the subject of our series. Now let's go over the second word, certainty. The Arabic word for certainty is yaqeen. The English, the English translation for it, absolute, absolute certainty. Believing in the six articles of faith with certainty, disbelief is not tainted with uncertainty or doubt. Certainty level of knowing something with absolute certainty without any doubt. I think I'm repeating the same exact words, just to make sure that you understand what is the meaning of the word certainty. Because it's a condition of la ilaha illallah. A condition of la ilaha illallah. The second condition. The first condition is knowledge, which must lead to certainty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that condition in the verse in Surah Al-Hujurat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون Indeed, the true believers are those who believed in Allah and His Messenger, and they never doubted it. They believed with certainty, and as a result of this, they committed themselves, their lives, 
to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the deen of Allah. They strove with their nafs, they strove with their wealth in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, these are the truthful ones. Immediately, as soon as you believe in the six articles of faith, right away you convict yourself to it. And this is the third word. And this is what is meant by Islam in the concept of Aqeedah. But again, I need to explore more the word certainty. I would like you to understand this because this is a key. What do you mean? Look at this. Let's talk about being uncertain about something. They tell you that there are three levels of uncertainty. Uncertainty is the opposite of certainty. But there are three levels. Level number one, it's shown in the graphic, hopefully. Le level number one, al wahm illusion. That's level number one. You're perceiving something wrong without any basis. I tell you there is a day of resurrection. It is, no, 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 there is no such a thing. But you lack the knowledge. You don't know. You, you refuted it, you, you, you negated it, you dismissed it, because you didn't learn. You didn't use iqra. <laughs> you didn't learn the revelation. al -wahm. So this is the first. You're uncertain because of illusion, because you lack the knowledge. The second level is called ashak, doubtfulness. Level of knowing something to be true, same with the level of doubtfulness. 50-50 we call it. Oh, shak. El, 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 the fact that you're, you're doubtful about it, you're not certain. <laughs> it's 50-50. Uh, brother, there is a day of resurrection. Mm, maybe. I think so. Yeah, possibly. This is another level of uncertainty. The third level, it is dhan, suspicion. What do you mean by suspicion? Level of knowing something with certainty, but with a slight amount of doubtfulness. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ إِنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌّ وَالسَّاعَةُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌّ وَالسَّاعَةُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا قُلْتُمْ مَا نَدْرِي مَا السَّاعَةُ إِنَّ ظُنُّ إِلَّا ظَنَّ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُسْتَيْقِنِينَ Look at that verse in Surah Al-Jathiyah. And when it was said to you, those who will lie the hereafter, in the world, in the dunya, Indeed, the promise of Allah is true, and the hour is true. You responded by, ma nadri ma what we, we don't know what you're talking, what hour, what day of resurrection, what are you talking about? But you know what? Inna dhunnu illa dhanna, but we have some suspicion about it. Look, wa ma nahnu bimustayqineen, look at yaqeen, certainty, we're not certain about it. So, when we talk about uncertainty, look at this. When we talk about uncertainty, you cannot have illusion, doubtfulness. You cannot have suspicion, which is the lowest amount, the slightest amount of doubtfulness. N now, let's go into the levels of certainty. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌّ وَالسَّاعَةُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا قُلْتُمْ مَا نَدْرِي مَا السَّاعَةُ إِنَّ ظُنُّ إِلَّا ظَنَّا وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُسْتَيْقِنِينَ This is a correction. Levels of certainty. Now you're being certain about something, you must possess this. Something called the knowledge of certainty. علم اليقين. That, you see, you cannot have the slightest amount of doubt about these articles of faith. To develop this, you must learn. That is why, كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين. 
if you just learn the knowledge of certainty, the knowledge which would lead you to certainty, the second level of certainty is when you see something, the eye of certainty. لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينِ When you see the hellfire, when you see Jannah, it becomes eye of certainty because you see something. Now when you actually experience it, when you enter it, it becomes the truth of certainty. So these are three levels. You as a Muslim, you as a believer must possess at least the lowest amount, which is the knowledge that leads you to certainty without the slightest amount of doubtfulness, of suspicion. Because if you go below that, whatever you believe in is called aqidah. I hope you understood this. This is a key. And this is where actually a companion whose name is Hanwala came to Abu Bakr and he said, Nafaqa Hanwala. The hadith is a Muslim. Hanwala is a hypocrite. Why did Hanwala conclude it? He said, when we are with the Messenger of Allah, and he would describe to us heaven and hell as if we visualize it. So his faith is up to the extent that he would imagine, visualize hell and paradise. But when we would go back home, that level drops to the knowledge. He didn't go below that, but only the knowledge of it. When we go back and mingle with the family and with, with, with the kids, عَفَسْنَا الْأَزْوَاجِ وَالضَّيْعَاتِ And our properties and taking care of our business, what happens? We, we drop. So, uh, this is a key, brothers and sisters in Islam. When they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, him and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them? Listen, if you stay the way that I stay, you will go up to the third level, which is what? Angels will shake your hands in bed and in the, in the walkways. Uh, important. So you must have certainty where there is no slight amount of uh, doubtfulness in it. Uh, the third word is conviction, which means Islam. That you commit yourself to what you believe in. You believing in the six articles of faith. Listen. You believing in the six articles of faith without, with certainty, without the commitment, without the conviction, you're lacking. And that is where Islam, that you must fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you're commanded to do something, you say, Sami'na wa ata'na. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, I hope you understood this. I'm going to take a short break and I will come back. And I'm going to give you some examples that will explain these three words which do explain the meaning of the word aqidah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Don't go away. I'll be waiting for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. I think I lost my ablution, but I'm not sure. Do I have to make wudu again? Is it allowed for Muslims to visit the graveyard, or is that shirk? Am I allowed to say Jummah Mubarak to someone? Can I get to know a sister before marriage? I have so many questions, and I feel that I've just reached a dead end. If only I could find someone trustworthy to answer my questions. Someone who speaks based on proof from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet.
imagine that the Anbiya, they were the ones, they were the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had the hardest time. He assumed that he had some kind of superiority and he was a better, more chosen, you know, a select, better person because he had this wealth. And then you look at all the other people who had wealth and some of them were the worst people. He had Fir'aun, Fir'aun and Harun. Reviving your niya time and again, time and again, uh, that you're doing insincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of the youth, they think, Oh, I'm gonna pray when I'm old. It's okay now. I'll have fun. Have fun in my life. Later on, I'll work. I'll go on my bed. I'll pray five times a day, and all these things. They think that that's later on in their life, and they don't know when and when when they will die. I mean, who's your role model? Khadija radiallahu And why? Because she was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's wife, and she was the first lady to believe in Islam. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, I hope you're not bored. I hope you're enjoying this. I really want to explain this a different way, quickly. And I promise you will get it this time. They tell you the religion of Islam is made of two main pieces. العلم بالله والعمل لله The first piece is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and consequently comes uh, angels, books, messengers, the six articles of faith. But that knowledge must lead to certainty. Now that's where conviction comes, which is in the second piece. وَالْعَمَلُ لِلَّهِ That you submit, adhere. You say the following. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Everything that I do, my rituals, my sacrifice, my life and death are for Allah. So they tell you the knowledge, that the, the, the religion is made of, the affairs of the religion is made of information about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the messengers, about the books, about the day of resurrection, about the qadr, information and commands, religious rulings, things that you're supposed to implement and do and adhere to. Now, if you want to know whether you possess the right belief system or not, the right aqidah or not, once it, comes to the, once it comes to the information that you're told about the six articles of faith, you must make tasdeeq with certainty. You must believe in them. And once it comes to the commands of Allah, the religious rulings which require outward action, application, you must say, Sami'na wa ata'na. I will give you two examples quickly because I would like to take your calls. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, when he was told by the polytheist, by the disbelievers in Mecca, Assalamu. I guess we have a, a, a phone call. Sister Amina from Canada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Sister Amina from Canada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Amina. I just have a one question to ask. Uh, is it permissible to freeze our legs to keep on your sleeping? Uh, speak up a little bit, uh, Sister Amina, please. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can you speak up a little bit? Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, it's better now. Yeah. Is it permissible to face our legs to Kibla when you're sleeping at night? Uh, right you're on your bed? And, yeah. So you're talking about sleeping at night and the Qibla, uh, facing the Qibla at night? Yeah, like you're facing your legs towards the Qibla. Jazakallah khairan. I wanna, uh, uh, I, uh, sister, uh, you're watching us on Galaxy or on, on, on the live streaming? I wanna ask. 
uh, are you watching on Galaxy? Uh, are you watching Huda TV in Galaxy or uh, a Galaxy in the satellite or on, on the internet? Internet, live streaming. Okay, uh, our sister is asking a fiqhi question and I would recommend if we can, uh, you know, save these questions for Dr. Muhammad Salah and ask Huda, but I'll answer you. Uh, when we sleep, we're supposed to sleep on our right side. But it's not a condition to face the Qibla. Jazakallahu khaira, barakallahu fiki. Call us again, please. And uh, remember, brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, uh, we're now available on Galaxy 19. Please spread the word. We need everybody uh, to let everyone uh, know about this, uh, that we're actually available on satellite in the United States of America now, the free-to-air satellite, Galaxy 19. If you want to get the information on how can you find Huda TV, just uh, go into www.huda.tv and the information will be there available uh, on the website. Please, uh, let, uh, let, let us spread the word. Uh, in fact, inshallah, we're working on um, uh, preparing some live shows uh, to suit uh, the American and Canadian, North America in general, viewers, bi idnillahi ta'ala, uh, time wise, because we know there is uh, six to nine hours time difference between uh, Cairo time and the United States time. Uh, well, I'm very happy that I had my first Canadian caller. Jazakallah um, uh, khairan. So the affairs of the religion is information that you must make tasdeeq and commands which you must fulfill. I want to give an example for what you have to make tasdeeq for. When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an was told that the Rasul sallallahu by the polytheist, that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, last night went to Jerusalem and he returned. Of course, 1400 plus years ago, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. What did Abu Bakr al-Siddiq say? Did he say this? He doesn't speak out of his own desire. Did he say this? They said yes. Then he spoke the truth. So anything that has to do with the unseen, which were told to you in the Quran, in the authentic hadith, you make tasdeeq of it, even if you do not realize and understand the wisdom behind it. Uh, a very famous hadith that a lot of us uh, become awkward a little bit to share it with non-Muslims in particular. That if you have a glass of water, like this one, and there is a fly that dips its wing in it, listen, if this is the only water available and you have to drink it, the Messenger of Allah and the hadith that is compiled in Sahih Bukhari tells you, dip the other wing and drink. <laughs> now, a lot of people would say, Come on, Sheikh, don't say that stuff to, uh, to non-Muslims. They're going to say we're uncivilized. Akhi, brother, sister, had a khabar, knowledge that came to you, akhbar, information that came to you from where? From Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you possess the right aqidah, you must make tasdeeq of it. Now, we understand that some German um, scientist uh, used his intellect in the right area, not to reject the khabar, not to reject the information, rather to figure out the wisdom behind it. Look at this. He found out that in one of the wing of that home fly, uh, that is what is called not mosquito, home fly, there is a disease, and in the other wing, there is a remedy. Oh, now Muslims say, oh, that's good stuff. Let's share it now with it. La, 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 la. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Here means what? Believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. And Allah will teach you the wisdom. Will teach you the wisdom behind everything. But if you reject it with your intellect because you're not comprehending it, totally, that is not the proper aqeedah. Let's come to the area of the commands. You know, there is a whole chapter, which is, uh, if you recite in, in your house, shaitan is kicked out. You know what chapter I'm talking about? The second chapter in the Quran called Al-Baqarah. Subhanallah, this chapter is filled with stories. The story of 
Bani Israel in general, the story of Harun and uh, the story of Musa alayhi salam and Harun and the Pharaoh, Harut and Marut, Talut and Jalut, Namrud, the man who, who debated uh, uh, with Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, and on oh, no, and no, on. No, so many stories. So many stories. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose one story to name this beautiful chapter after. The story of the cow. Qissat al-Baqarah. The story of the cow is about this. How Bani Israel, the children of Israel, failed to fulfill the aspect of conviction, the aspect of submission in the area of Aqidah. Here is the story, and uh, these are Israelites, which we do not believe it, we do not be light. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to speak about the children of Israel. But we do not believe it, we do not be light, because we don't have an authentic chain of narration that takes us back, uh, whether this story is correct or not. But here it is, it's mentioned in the books of Tafsir, that when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert for 40 years, uh, they normally were uh, divided or into 12, uh, basically, uh, tribes. And there was a man who was so wealthy, and he had nephews, and they were the only people entitled to inherit him. He was so wealthy, his nephews are poor and needy, and he was stingy. Imagine, stingy can destroy you. Stinginess, I'm sorry, can destroy you. So the nephews decided to expedite the process of inheritance. <laughs> he said, why do we have to wait until he dies? Let's just take care of him. So they uh, debated with one another and they said, but listen, they're going to find out because th th we are the only beneficiaries. We're the only people who would benefit from his death. They will figure this out easy. They said, we have a good idea. Let's throw his body, dead body, in the province of another tribe. So they did. In the morning, they woke up. Uh, the, 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 this tribe where uh, the crop of, of, the, of, of the man was uh, thrown at, uh, they started asking, who is this person? They, we didn't kill him. Who killed him? And the, the nephews came, you guys killed him, and we need a ransom. To, they became greedy. <laughs> So they said, why would we argue when we have Nabiullah Musa amongst us? Let's go to Prophet Musa, the one who speaks to Allah. He's going to help us solve that problem. So they came to Musa alayhi salam. Allah referred this, uh, to this in the Quran. وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا A soul was killed. And he started arguing and debating who killed the person. So they came to Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Look, Prophet Musa alayhi salam asked Allah to guide them to the killer. Here is the command. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً Look how Prophet Musa alayhi salam worded the command. Listen, Allah, in order to solve that mystery, Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you to slay a cow. Right now, quite frankly, if you use your intellect to begin with, there is no relationship between finding out who is the killer and the command. But with the commands of Allah, you do not use your int intellect. You do not use your societal norms. You do not use what is uh, tasty and what is not tasty. إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The attitude of the believers when they are commanded by Allah and His Messenger to do something is to say we hear and we obey. The children of Israel kept arguing, what cow, which color, we don't know, there are too many cows. 
would they have submitted to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They would have just grabbed any cow slate. They kept arguing and making things difficult on themselves. At the end of the day, they tell you the books of tafsir that they ended up buying a cow with its weight, gold and silver. But again, that shows you that you should not reject the command of Allah because your intellect cannot uh, perceive it, cannot understand it, cannot comprehend the wisdom behind it. Listen, what you need to make sure of, this is in the Quran, it was it translated correctly to you, this is in the sound hadith, it was explained to you correctly, now your job, sami'na wa ata'na. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded Surah Al-Baqarah with an amazing verses. Uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about these verses that whoever recites them at night or in the morning, they will suffice you. And there is a story behind these verses. Listen to this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ الآية To Allah belongs what's in the heavens and what's in the earth and whether you reveal or conceal your intentions what you want to do, you're held accountable. Ya Allah. Imagine if I'm sitting like this and thinking about stealing. Done. Written. Thinking about adult. A'udhu billiyah. Done. Look at the reaction of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'm telling you, the reaction was not because they want to reject the command here. But they feel this is impossible. This is something that we cannot do. في صحيح الإمام مسلم حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه They came to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم kneeling جثوا على الركب They said يا رسول الله O messenger of Allah We were commanded to pray We said سمعنا وأطعنا We were commanded to fast We said سمعنا وأطعنا We were commanded to pay زكاء سمعنا وأطعنا We were commanded to do jihad سمعنا وأطعنا This one O messenger of Allah we can't and we don't want to fall short, O Messenger of Allah. We want to obey Allah. We love Allah. We want to obey Him. Look what the Messenger of Allah said to them. Aturiduna. Do you want to say like the people of the two books before you said? The followers of the Torah and the followers of the Gospel. What did they say? Sami'na wa'asayna. We hear and we disobey. I want you to say, بَلْ قُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Subhanallah, ya ikhwah. Subhanallah. Abu Hurairah, the narrator of the hadith, says, فَزَلَّتْ بِهَا أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ Ya Allah, because they were truthful. They were, you know, they, they did not really object or reject the command uh, b because of 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 uh, uh, of, uh, of something, no, they are not saying سمعنا وعصينا like the followers of the two books. No, they were just concerned that they will not be able to fulfill this. Now, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to them, "Say we hear and we obey." They said it. The next verse. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله. So this is the faith, the matters of faith here. Imagine this. This verse, by the way, contain both the six articles and believing in them with certainty, and also سمعنا وأطعنا is there. Here it is. كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله. So they all believed in the six articles of faith, the messenger of Allah and the believers. So this is what matters of faith, the six articles of faith. They believed in it with certainty. 
with certainty. And that is why they said what? وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا And they said we hear and we obey to the other segment of aqeedah, which is what? The commands, the religious rulings, which require action. Man, if you get this piece, I'm telling you, you got a good start to understand the deen. Wallahi, if you, if you grasp the meaning here. Aqeedah, Iman, Islam. You see, Iman, sets of unseen that you believe in with certainty, but that belief must be translated and interpreted into what? Sami'na wa ata'na. And that is why the verse. Let me recite the verse to you again. Again, and you all know it. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. so they ended up with both. they believed they made تصديق to the أخبار to the information. And they said, we hear and we obey to the commands. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, revealed the relief. Immediately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the relief to them. La, look at the final verse now. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Now you're relieved from this. Allah will not hold you accountable. Except for that which you actually do. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اكْتَسَبَتْ Add to this, if you do something and you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you, He will forgive you. Ya Allah. Now why? Because they possessed the proper, correct belief system, aqeedah. That is why they were entitled to this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them the relief, Beside that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive their shortcomings. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is what aqeedah is all about. That when you're told of something that is unseen regarding Allah, angels, jinn, books, messengers, day of resurrection, qadr, you believe it with certainty. And when you're commanded to do something, you say, we hear and we obey. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I love you all for the sake of Allah. I hope I was able today to present the definition, the meaning of the word aqeedah. Inshallah, next episode, we will carry on. And we're going to talk about the characteristics and the importance of the Islamic belief system. It's the only belief system in the face of this earth that is sound. You know why? Because Allah has preserved it. And this is one of the first characteristics. I'm creating some suspense here, so I would see you the next episode, inshallah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. I have to sign off till the next episode of Aqeedah Matters. I, I leave you in the care of Allah, and I will see you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. Deep in the deepest ocean. High on the highest mountain In the forest, in the desert You can see God creation In the forest, in the desert You can see God creation He made us different nation And there's no different nation He made us different nation And there's no different nation If you're black if you're white, we are all God creation. If you're black, if you're white, we are all God creation. Deep in the deepest ocean, high.